Hello and welcome. So a teacher says, tell me a sentence that starts with an I. A student starts to reply, I is the... And the teacher immediately interrupts and says, stop! Never put is after an I. Always put am after an I. And the student says, oh, okay. I am the ninth letter of the alphabet. In this video, we're not going to talk about I's at all. That would be for complex numbers. Instead, we're going to talk about polar coordinates, polar equations, and polar curves, and how we apply calculus to all of that. So recall from trigonometry that a polar coordinate system is another way to locate points on a plane. Here, instead of using Cartesian coordinates, which are x and y, we have polar coordinates, r and theta. In figure one, we have a picture of what the polar coordinate system might look like when you use, um, instead of the uh, grid lines at each x value and at each y value, here instead we have grid lines at each r value and each theta value. r's are a distance away from the origin, so this circle would be r equals 1, and this uh, next circle would be r equals 2, and so on. The lines going through the origin are going to represent angles. So this line right here, this dashed line, would represent a line of constant angle, um, in this case pi over 12. This angle here, the next one would be pi over 6, and then pi over 4, and pi over 3, and then 5 pi over 12, and pi over 2. So the grid circles, you could call them, are going to be constant r values, and the grid lines going through the origin are constant theta values. Let's get a little bit of practice by plotting some points in polar, uh, polar coordinates. So an example would be 3 comma pi over 4. So this is not x equals 3 and y equals pi over 4. This is r equals 3 and theta equals pi over 4. And the way you could plot this is by First, going to the angle theta, uh, theta in this case pi over 4, so if you look at the pi over 4 line, uh, then go from the origin out 3 units along that pi over 4 line. So that would land you at 3 comma pi over 4. Now you can also have negative r values, and here's an example of what a negative r value might look like. Negative 3 comma pi over 4. So to plot uh, polar coordinates using negative r angles that have negative r angles, or angles, <laughs> negative r values, what you do is first go to the theta, so this is pi over 4, this pi over 4 line, but then continue that line all the way through the origin to the other side, so that you have this long line that goes infinitely um, in that, at that pi over 4 angle uh, in both directions. So it's kind of like you have a, if you take the x value, x uh, axis, and you rotate it so that it's pointing in the direction of pi over 4, then you have a number line where you can either travel in the positive direction along the number line or the negative direction along the number line, right? Just like in, in the, on the x axis, you can go in the positive direction, positive 1, 2, 3, 4 in the x positive x direction or you can go negative, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. It's the same thing with the r values. So you can set up your uh, number line to be pointing in the direction of pi over 4, and then if your r is negative, you'll just go in the opposite direction from where you're pointing. So 1, 2, 3 in the negative r direction. That'll land you in the third quadrant in this case. Let's go through some more examples, like 4 comma negative pi over 3. Now in this case, the theta is negative, so you're going to go, you're going to rotate negative 4 pi over 3 so that you're along this line here, and then go positive 4 in that direction, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's negative, so there's 4 comma negative 4 pi over 3. Now what if you started at 3 comma pi over 4 and you went all the way around the circle? So in other words, you added 2 pi. Well, you would get to another point. It's exactly the same point, but it has a different r theta combination. So this would be 3 comma 
9 pi over 4. If you took pi over 4 and you added 2 pi, then you get 9 pi over 4. So this same point could be represented as 3 comma pi over 4 or 3 comma 9 pi over 4. We didn't used to have that with Cartesian uh, coordinates. With Cartesian coordinates, all you had was a single xy representation for each point on the plane. But with polar coordinates, you could have an infinite number of representations for a single point on the plane. Now I want to give some for you guys to try. So try 2 comma pi, 5 pi over 6. 2 comma 5 pi over 6. Try to figure out where that would be on the coordinate system. Can you point to where that would be? So if you were pointing here, then that would be correct. You want to go rotate the number line to an angle of 5 pi over 6, so it's pointing in the 5 pi over 6 direction, and then go positive 2 in the r direction, so positive 2 along that number line. How about negative 4 comma 5 pi over 6? Can you point to where that would be? If you were pointing here, then that's correct. So what you do is you rotate your number line to the 5 pi over 6 direction, which we kind of already had it rotated there from the previous point that we plotted. And then instead of going positive 2 in that direction, we're going to go negative 4. So we're going in the opposite direction. Right? R equals 0, by the way, would be right here at the origin. So in the direction of your angle is positive r. The opposite direction is your angle would be negative r. So negative 4 in that direction. All right, one more. 3 comma negative pi over 3. If you're pointing here, then that's correct. So you're going to go negative pi over 3. And then from the uh, origin, you're going to go 1, 2, 3 in that direction. So that's just getting a warm up of plotting some r theta pairs. A couple of notes. One is that each xy point has an infinite number of polar coordinate representations. As we mentioned, we can take any angle and add 2 pi or add 2 pi twice or three times or four times, add 2 pi as many times as we want, and we would get the same exact point on the coordinate system. Also, r can be negative, as we mentioned. So this means that 1 comma 0, r equals 1 and theta equals 0, is the same thing as negative 1 comma pi. r equals negative 1 and r equals pi. They're the same point. And you can think about why those are the same point. Let's look at example 1. It says graph the following polar equations. r equals 1. That's a polar equation because it's got one of the polar variables, either r or theta, in it. And it's got an equal sign, so it's an equation. Now in figure 2, it's a blank. Uh, coordinate system. Now it does say x and y for the x and y axes, but again we're thinking of things in terms of r and theta. So the r's are like the concentric circles coming out of the origin, and then the thetas are like the lines going through the origin, if we're thinking about those. So r equals 1 would just be a circle with radius 1 centered at the origin. Now here, you can think, there's no theta here, so theta can be anything. It can be anything from 0 to 2 pi, or even 2 pi to 4 pi. You can, it, you can go around the circle as many times as you want, but this would be the collection of all the points that r equals 1 would, uh, would um, see. So what about r equals negative 2? What would that look like? If you said a circle with radius 2 centered at the origin, then that's correct. So even when r is negative 2, you're still going to go 2 away from the origin. You'll just be going in the opposite direction as whatever angle you're, you're looking at. But if you consider all the possible angles, all values of theta, then that's going to map out this circle with radius 2. All of your points will have a distance of 2 away from the origin. What about theta equals pi over 6? What would that one look like? If you said a line going through the origin at an angle of pi over 6, then that would be correct. And here I've just drawn the arrow going in the pi over 6 direction, going uh, towards like in quadrant 1 rather than quadrant 3 to remind you that this is like a rotating number line. 
it does go, uh, you know, if you graph this, it goes infinitely in both directions. But I just want you to always be thinking about this is like a rotating number line. Uh, and you rotate it an angle theta and then move along the number line based on what your r value is. Now in this case we have all possible r values, that's, which is why we travel all up and down the line. What about theta equals 7 pi over 6? If you said the exact same uh, <laughs> line, then that would be correct. And probably if I were consistent, I would draw the arrow going this way. But it goes both directions. All right, I don't know why I drew that arrow going this way. That's a mistake. Oopsie. <laughs> All right, what about r between 1 and 3? So r, so 1 less than or equal to r, less than or equal to 3. Now here, you have some boundaries. You have r equals 1 and r equals 3. So you can draw those. Those are just circles at r equals 1 and r equals 3. And then it's going to be all the points in between, because those are going to have r values between 1 and 3. So you can shade everything uh, there. Looks kind of like a washer. What about r is between 1 and 3, and theta is between 0 and pi over 2? Well, that's going to take the part of the washer that's between 0 and pi over 2, which is in the first quadrant. So it's just going to be that part of the washer. Right, there's the theta equals 0 uh, boundary, and then there's the theta equals pi over 2 boundary up along the y-axis. What about r between negative 3 and 2, including negative 3 but not including 2, and theta equals pi over 4? Well, here the most more stringent requirement is that theta has to equal pi over 4. So you could draw a line at pi over 4, and apparently I'm just going all kinds of crazy on these arrows after mentioning that the arrows... <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, so we're just drawing the line at pi over 4 all the way through the origin in both directions. And then we're going to draw the r values between negative 3 and 2. We'll put a filled in dot at an r value of negative 3 and then an open circle at 2. So it would look something like this. A segment along that theta equals pi over 4 line from r equals negative 3, which would be in quadrant th uh, 3, up to r equals 2, which is in quadrant 1, but again an open circle there for r equals 2. And if you clean everything up, this is really all that all that is for this graph. Alright, <clears throat> so what about this one? Theta is between 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 6. So here the boundaries are lines. Theta equals 2 pi over 3 is a line. Theta equals 5 pi over 6 is a line. So we can draw those two lines, the 2 pi over 3 line and the 5 pi over 6 line in both directions. And then we can think, what happens if r is anything? Well, that's going to fill out. Um, so theta can be between these two theta values. And then if r is anything for each of those thetas between, then you're just going to have all the lines in between uh, these theta lines of 2 pi over 3 and 5 pi over 6. So we're going to fill in in both directions. So thank you for watching this video, and see you in the next one.